Welcome to Module 6, Lesson 16, Slicing a Right Rectangular Prism with a Plane. Okay, not an airplane, but a plane. Okay, a geometrical plane, or geometric plane. Okay, and we'll talk, talk more about these things in a minute, of course, but... Um, um, as you know, this is the beginning of um, <clears throat> Topic C, which, uh, which will lead us into pretty much the, the, the last, the second half of this um, module and um, the end of the year of math, in seventh grade. Okay, um, so we are going to examine cross sections of solid figures in the next four lessons, okay? So that's 16, 17, 18, and 19, okay? Um, in these lessons, lesson 16, and then in lesson 17, we're going to examine slices made parallel or perpendicular to a face of a solid before moving on to more angular slices in uh, lesson 18, okay? So we are going to talk a little bit about um, these things, some of these terms I just used, a slice, for example, and a plane, okay? So uh, first about the slice, okay? So um, when you think of slices, um, you may think of a slice of bread, a slice of pizza, a slice of cake, Okay, things of that nature, little slices, a slice of cucumber, okay? Um, now, I want to make sure here, just before we move on, that we're all thinking of a slice in the same way, okay? Um, the slice of pizza, let's not think of that, okay? Let's get the slice of pizza out of our minds, even though it is one of the uh, more popular ideas of a slice. Now, this slice of bread that you see here. You see a little bread slicer machine, okay, which is really, really pretty nifty. And I'm sure it doesn't work as well as it looks like it works because the bread's going to move around and crush and stuff. So they're making it look real good here. But anyway, what's very particular about these slices of bread is that they are being sliced, as you see, perfectly vertically, okay, with these vertical slices here, all right? So they're creating vertical slices of this bread, and each piece of this bread, okay, each slice here is going to be um, equal, okay, or just about equal in, um, in their size and their slice. You can see there being, um, the, each one of these is then would be like a, a plane right here, okay, the, like the plane, and we'll talk about planes in a, in, in a minute, but this idea of a bread slicer or a slice of bread is um, is good, okay? So if we narrow our way down, um, and a slice, we want to talk about <clears throat> as being done in a single motion, okay? In a single motion. So like a slice of cake, um, you create a wedge, right? So you need uh, two cuts to make that slice of cake generally. You generally make a wedge of cake if you cut, you know, you have a round cake generally, okay? And you cut like a a slice of cake is going to come out, come out looking like that, okay, you know, something like, like that, or, yeah, something like that, okay, slice of cake, we don't want to think of that, all right, we want to think of more or less this idea of a slice of bread, or we can look at um, one of these uh, slicers, and you guys, if anybody who's been to a deli, or um, to the um, delicatessen section of uh, of a supermarket, okay, um, they have these um, these meat and cheese slicers, and you can see that you can set, and uh, you know, I've used one of these before, I used to own a deli with my dad, um, and you set this, this, um, this slicer here, the blade, okay, using a tool, usually on this side or this side somewhere, and you can widen that, you can open, the, you open up the space behind here, you can open it up very wide if you want a thicker slice, or very, very tight, very narrow, if you want thin, thin slice, okay? But that idea of that, these are another good example of a single motion cut, okay? 
the, the bread is a single motion down. Well, of course, you've got to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with this knife, of course. But it's a single motion down and this single motion across. And it's going to cut up a piece of salami like that, okay, at a certain, certain thickness, okay? Now, there are some non-food-related examples like... Um, like a stack of quarters, okay, is a good, um, a good image to uh, to get into your head, okay, concerning a slice. And again, we are trying to just more um, narrowly define this idea of slice, okay, because we're going to use this word, all right, because this quarter right here, this one right here, is actually a is, is very much a good example of a slice of this stack, okay, because this stack we stacked these up, we made a a stack of quarters, and if we took one slice out of it, it would be this one quarter right here, okay? Again, this idea of a slice, even a, a deck of cards would be a good, um, a deck of playing cards. You know, you take one card out, and it's kind of a slice of the entire deck, okay? Um, alrighty, so, um, okie doke. Now, one point um, before we move on, we're going to actually talk about this, uh, about the term plane, okay? Talk about the term plane, P-L-A-N-E, and we'll get to that. And, and the question that kind of begs uh, um, this conversation is this idea of um, what is the slice part, okay? What is the slice part? Is the slice in, in, in geometry the same as in with this bread, for example, okay, because this slice, we think of this whole, this piece of bread right here, the actual physical piece that we sliced off as being the slice, okay? Another question might be, though, another possibility might actually be the resulting surface from the cut. So is this the slice, okay, just this part, just this surface area here, is that the slice, okay? Um, so that's what we're going to consider now as we move on to talk a little bit more about this idea of plane, okay, this idea of plane. Now, plane, the plane, P-L-A-N-E, okay, is an absolute building block of geometry that really does not have a solid definition, okay? It's, in, in a sense, it's um, undefinable, um, what we know about um, is that the representation, we know what a representation of it looks like, okay? And um, here's one right here. These are two planes, okay? Two planes, and um, they are very special planes, okay? They are parallel planes, okay? Now, not only are they parallel planes, um, but that means something very, very special in geometry. And you may know that. So if we imagine these planes growing, okay, growing outwards, okay, no line, no part of this plane here, this plane, okay, right here, this plane, and that's what the plane is. The plane is everything, okay? It's this entire, entire piece, okay? This plane nor the one behind it, okay? Let's make that one another different color. These will never touch, okay? They will never touch because they are parallel planes, okay? Parallel. These, you know, this line is going to keep moving that way, this line is going to keep moving that way, and this one that way, but there will always be that space in between, okay? Always space in between. They will never, never, ever touch, okay? Never touch touch, all right? Um, that is, um, is opposite of this idea of what we call perpendicular planes, okay? These here are perpendicular, okay? Oops, I want to do my black here. Perpendicular, all right? These are perpendicular planes right here, okay? And as you can see, they do intersect. They do touch, okay? Um, they actually um, will touch right in the middle, and you'll see what they have in common. What they have in common is a single line, and you can see right there, and here is the line that they have in common, right? Oh, let me put that 
red right there, as you see. Okay, so here is uh, you can see plane one here that's moving up upwards, and plane two, which is moving um, left to right. Okay, right to left, and all over the place. Um, but they do, they do, um, they do touch each other. Okay, and in a sense, we can slice one with the other, okay? Now, parallel planes, you can do no slicing, okay? So no slicing here, okay? So no, no slicing possibilities, okay? But here we do have, we can slice, each one of these can actually slice the other um, at that one line, okay? Um, yeah, and if you, if you just think of something in terms of, of parallel, let's just look at something here. Let's look at a tissue box if we want to look at this. So with a tissue box we have, you know, we can demarcate some planes here. Here's one. Okay, this side of the box. Okay. Now this side of the box is never going to touch this other side of the box. Okay. Alright. So we can have this, if we, we grew this box upwards, okay, this way. We grew it upwards and this, this side became that big. This other side would, uh, you know, and grow that one as well, and it became that big. These will never, they will never touch this side here and this other side because they are parallel, okay? But we do have this side over here, okay? I'm trying to get another color, okay? This side here and this other side um, right here that we talked about, this one here. You can see that if we grow this out, Okay, and then we grow this out. Mm -hmm. They do touch, and they do intersect right there. Okay, and they actually cut each other or slice each other right at that point. Okay, so this idea of perpendicular and parallel um, <clears throat> planes is going to be um, really, really Im important. Okay. Okay, so let's go on to example one here. It's in your binder. Um, consider um, a ball B. Okay, here's this ball B. All right. Uh, figure three here shows one possible slice of ball B. Okay, one possible slice of ball B. So what figure does the slicing plane form? Okay, so here is our slicing plane. Plane, of course, this right here is our slicing plane. Um, what figure does the slicing plane form? Okay, um, it says here students may choose their method of representation of the slice. Um, you know, drawing a 2D sketch, 3D sketch, or describing the slice in words. What do you think? You can do either of those. Okay, either of those. So if you're thinking something like a circle or a disc, okay, a circle or a disc, um, you would be correct in that thought because you can see it right here. It's actually represented by this green, this green portion here. Okay, it shows you where. Um, so if I, you know, flipped this this way, okay, we would have, um, you know, this piece would be right there like that. Okay, but then if I turned it around. Okay, it would look, of course, like that, and here would be my disc or my circle, okay? And you see where that, what I did with that? So I flipped this up and took this part that's been sliced. It's going to look like that from the side, but then if I turned it around, it's going to be like, it's going to look like that, okay? So yeah, so a circle or a disc. This is really important when you move, we're moving on to, uh, to next year, I was talking to our to the eighth grade teacher, and um, this is really, really good stuff for you guys to um, to pay attention to. I know it's the end of the year; it's tough to get into this, um, but um, this is um, really, really important stuff if you uh, if you pay pay good attention. Okay, so B asks you here: Will all slices that pass through B be the same size? Explain your reasoning. What do you think? If I keep slicing here, another plane slice there, and slice, 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 and you could probably get an idea. Are they all going to be the same size? Well, no. Okay, no. 
And um, if you want to stop right now and pause and, um, and uh, give your reasoning, well, um, you can go ahead and do that. Um, but as you can see, that is the nature of this sphere. This is a ball here. It is a sphere. Okay, so this sphere is actually, if you slice that sphere, you're going to have several different size circles created. Okay, and you can see that. And right around, right there at the middle or the equator of this sphere is going to be your, would be your largest circle right there at the equator, which is where we would find the diameter, okay, of our, our that middle circle there, or the diameter actually of the sphere, okay, is going to be right, right there, okay? So next question here asks, um, let's see, how will the plane have to meet the ball so that the plane section consists of just one point? How will the plane have to meet the ball so that, so that the plane section consists of just one point? Think about that and uh, come on back. Okay, so this is a very interesting question. Maybe you guys, uh, wasn't too, too difficult. But if you think of a sphere and you have your sphere or you have your ball, they're calling it a ball still here. Okay, then you have your, your plane. Okay, the idea would be to get this, to lower this plane to the place where they just meet, where ball or sphere just meet, which is going to be right at the tip of that ball. And maybe you know, somewhere on this on this plane, okay? So there's going to be one point. So just when they touch. So in fact, they can indeed meet at just one point, okay? Just one point that way. Okay, so these examples here, two and three, they're going to um, highlight um, or deal with, you know, slices made to a rectangular prism that make the plane section parallel to a face and perpendicular to a face, respectively, okay? Angle, we're not going to talk about angled slices right yet, okay? Everything we're doing is going to be either straight, parallel um, slicing um, of um, rectangular prisms, okay? So... Um, Alrighty, yeah, so here we go. We have, um, have our prism right here, okay? A right rectangular prism. Let's go ahead and look at this example two. Um, so the right rectangular prism in figure four here has been sliced with a plane parallel to face A, B, C, D, okay? So it's parallel to that, to that slice right there, okay? The plane has sliced it. The resulting slice is a rectangular region that is identical to the parallel face, okay? The resulting slice. So label, it says here, label the vertices of the rectangular region defined by the slice as W, X, Y, Z. So where would you label? Where would... W, X, Y, Z, go on this um, right here to, um, to demarcate or to show where this new um, resulting slice is. Okay, and if we want to just follow suit with by um, alphabetical order, we'll put a W, W, X, Y and Z, <laughs> back to Z, okay? Yeah, so there you go. So we have, and that's this, those are the, going to be the vertices of this new slice right here created by that plane that we slid down through figure four, okay? To which other face is the slice parallel and identical? Yes, of course, you could see it back there. It is E, F, G, H. Okay, right back there. There it is. Let's do that in red. There's our E, 
F, G, H right there, okay? And then while I'm at it, might as well go ahead and um, color this one in. A, B, C, D, all right? So there we go, we have those three. So they are parallel to each other, okay? Parallel, they are identical to each other, okay? So this is E, F, G, H, E, F, G, H, okay? Parallel, they are identical as well, okay? So it says, based on what you know about right rectangular prisms, which faces must the slice be perpendicular to? Which faces must the slice be perpendicular to? Okay. And again, let's go ahead and use this one here, and I'll just erase this, make it a little bit cleaner. Okay. Um, so this slice that we just made, and that's the darker plane right there, Okay, which, um, which faces must it be perpendicular to? Well, one you can see, um, see right away, you can see we have um, right here, we have um, perpendicular, is going to be perpendicular to this face right here. Okay, so you can see that, okay, and that would be ADFG, okay. So A, D, F, G would be one, okay? And we also have, we have here B, B, H, E, C. Mm -hmm. Okay, that has to be perpendicular, perpendicular to, to that one as well, okay? Um, and there are others, others we could, we could use. Um, as well. Yeah, and actually that is, um, you can see there are other ones here. We have C, D, F, E um, right here. That That is actually going to be perpendicular to as well. So if we flipped it, we can see, you can see how this, this line here is going to move through that. Okay, so yeah, so it is actually perpendicular to, to those as well. It's also perpendicular here to A, B, H, G as well. Okay, so add A, D, H, G, and then we had um, also C, D, F, E. Okay, yeah, so that plane that we have used, our slicing plane, which is the one in the brown there, um, it needs to be perpendicular um, to all of those uh, faces that we just, um, we just, uh, just spoke of. Okay. Okay, so this exercise one here, um, you know, wants you to be, you know, recommends you're in a group, of course. Um, and if you can, you know, if you have your mom or dad or someone nearby, it'd be, be great to dis, you know, always to discuss these things. It's, I don't know, sometimes it's not as much fun to do math alone. Well, for some of us anyway, but it's good to bounce some ideas off of each other. But anyway, even if you're doing it yourself, would you go ahead and do this one? Um, go ahead and do exercise one and... Um, do A, B, and C, and then come back and we can um, we could talk about it. Okay, so um, just read it here for you. So the right rectangular prism in figure 5 has been sliced with a plane parallel to face L-M-O-N. Okay, so it's parallel to L-M-O-N. Okay, and then go ahead and um, do, the, um, do A, B, and C and come on back and check in. Okay, so um, A asks us to label the vertices of the rectangle defined by the slice as RSTU. And we went ahead and did that right there. Okay, RSTU. All right, and again, I'm not sure exactly which way you are labeling these um, RSTU, just like that. I mean, if you did it a different way, it doesn't really, really matter that, that much. Okay, but anyway, those are... Um, that's, that's our new rectangle that we've created right there, okay? And um, what, were, what would be the dimensions then of this slice? That's what B asks us here. What are the dimensions? And not the area, um, but just the dimensions, okay? And those are, of course, we have 11 by 10, or we have 10 centimeters by 11 centimeters. So the dimensions of that slice, because this is a right rectangular prism, and that is a 
parallel plane to L M O N. Um, they are identical, okay, and because they're identical, they will have the same dimensions, okay. So CS is here based on what you know about right rectangular prisms, which faces must the slice be perpendicular to, okay, and just like we did in the last example, there was one, okay, again perpendicular, perpendicular to that face, to that one, and to that, okay, and again, you're your letters may be um, ordered differently. That's fine, as long as you have the um, the correct um, planes or the correct sorry correct faces, um, which are also planes, but the correct faces um, lay uh, just laid out there. Okay. Okay. So this example um, presents a little a different situation to us um, in one aspect. Okay, but. Um, not entirely different. So it says here the right rectangular prism in figure six has been sliced with a plane perpendicular to B, C, E, H. Okay, so here's B, C, E, H. Okay, so it's perpendicular to that face right there. Okay, perpendicular to B, C, E, H. Uh, e H, but what they have not said or have not um, mentioned was um, the idea that it was parallel to anything. Okay, so they haven't mentioned this idea of it being parallel to anything. So that's really important. We're just saying that it is perpendicular. Okay, perpendicular. All right, so you know, creating right angles, for for example. So. All right, so if you went ahead and labeled the vertices of this rectangle defined by the slice, W, X, Y, Z, okay, it would be W right there, X, Y, and then Z, okay? So we have some vertices there. There'd be little points right on those, those lines right there where... Um, where they intersect there, okay? So that would be uh, part A. So part B, um, to which other face, okay? And there's only going to be one in this case. Is this slice perpendicular, okay? To which other, to which other face? And um, as you can see, you can see that face would be this one here, A, D, F, G, okay? So it is um, also perpendicular to A, D, F, G, okay, and it will move on through there as well. Okay, so um, the question here then, what is the length of um, Z, Z, Y? Okay, what is the length of that um, segment, that line segment there? And that's X, Y, Z, Z, Y is right, is right here, okay, right down there. And uh, that, of course, that height is going to be exactly the same as the height of the uh, rectangular prism, and that is six inches, okay? So um, line segment ZY equals six inches, okay? All right, so now um, we've got Joey here. Of course, we've got Joey. Joey's always bringing up something, some issues, huh? Joey looks at WX. Y, Z, okay, Z, sorry, and thinks that the slice may be a parallelogram that is not a rectangle. Based on what is known about this, how the slice is made, can he be right? And then justify your reasoning. So go ahead and think about this. Now, Joey is saying that it is a parallelogram, okay, but he's saying it is not a rectangle because of the way it has been drawn. What do you think? Um, think about that and, and come on back. So what did you think of Joey's, uh, Joey's question here about this uh, being a parallelogram but not a, um, not a rectangle? Well, let's just take a look. I just went ahead and made, a, um, went ahead and made another rectangle here. Um, Similar to that one, of course, not exactly the same. And then went ahead and filled in and put in that slice 
Okay, that slice, similar slice, and that's, again, this here would be a W, X, Y, Z here, W, X, Y, Z, okay? And then what I did here, and again, you can, I mean, you can tell intuitively if you look at it, but if you actually, like, like I did, I went ahead and just took it away, rebuilt it there, okay? And just put these back here, okay? And as you can see, if I took that, if I lopped that piece off right there, okay, if I lopped it off, I am still left with a rectangle, okay? This slice here, this plane right here is still a rectangle. It's not a parallelogram. It's not tilted. What would make it a parallelogram? Like a parallelogram would be if it looked like something like this. Now, the only way that is ever going to happen is if the actual right rectangle, well, it wouldn't be a right rectangular prism then, okay? But the fact that this piece was taken from a right rectangular prism here with all right angles, okay? All right angles there, okay? All of those are right angles. Because of that, we know that every part of this is going to also be comprised of uh, right angles, okay? All of these are right angles here, okay? And because they're all right angles, that makes it, of course, a rectangle, okay? So it's going to um, retain its rectangular shape, okay? So anything that, any slice we make that's either perpendicular or parallel um, to the, um, to any face on a right rectangular prism, that slice is going to result in a rectangle. Okay, so now in the following exercises, the points at which a slicing plane meets the edges of the right rectangular prism have been marked. Each slice is either parallel or perpendicular to a face of the prism. Use a straight edge, okay, a ruler, or some other straight edge, to join the points to outline the rectangular region defined by the slice and shade in the rectangular slice. Okay, so you, um, again, this first one is just asking for a slice parallel to a face. Okay, so um, it could be several, several different, um, several different looks to it. Okay, and uh, one, and again, use a straight edge. I'll, I'll try to use a, well, what my, it's my, this is my, um, my straight edge here. Is this, is this tool? And let me, uh, let me go ahead and make it. Um, I'll come on back. But yeah, I'll do this one for you. And again, they're giving it to you. They're just telling you a slice parallel to the face. That is your direction. Okay. Okay, so here's my process here. So a slice parallel to a face, very much like that. Okay, use your straight edge. This is probably not so perfect. And then they want you to go ahead and um, do a shade in that rectangular slice. Okay, so there is that one done. That's number two. Okay, and then um, <clears throat> they um, want you to go ahead and do uh, numbers three, four, um, Five and six. So if you would go ahead and just follow those instructions, and um, and uh, yeah, and then come on back and we'll look at them together. There's going to be various answers. So just so you know. Okay. Well, here's number do number three together here, and uh, again using those little I don't know. There's little if you can see the little dots in your. In your booklet, I uh, I gotta tell you honest God truth. I know this doesn't surprise anyone, but um, you know how poorly I see. But my little dots on mine are green, as you can see there. Um, I could not see those very well. Did not realize that until a little bit later. But yeah, go ahead. And I just went ahead and just um, um, connected all my dots that they gave me. My little green dots. So I'm creating a slice perpendicular to a face, parallel to nothing, coloring it in, and um, and there it is. Tons of fun. Um, here is a number four slice perpendicular to a face again uh, using um, using the uh, dots, kind of, sort of, not really hitting them exactly um, with my tools. 
Hopefully you did better with your straight edge. Much easier, I'm thinking, with a ruler on your um, in your binder. But yeah, again, perpendicular to faces, but parallel to nothing. Okay, and there we go. Uh, the next one, these next two, a little bit different. Um, what they wanted you to do is to go ahead and use this, the dimensions um, to sketch the slice from each prism and provide the dimensions of each slice. So, for example, here went ahead and uh, drew my uh, plane and uh, colored in my rectangle. So my that rectangle I have just created there with that slice is going to be 20 millimeters by 13 millimeters, of course, matching up to the dimensions of the original right rectangular prism from whence it came. Okay? And in similar fashion, number six, a slice perpendicular to a face, connecting those dots, coloring in my slice, and then creating my diagram of my slice, which of course is going to be 8 millimeters by 12 millimeters, matching up to the dimensions of the original um, right rectangular prism. Okay, so here we are. did it in less than 40 minutes. So happy. It seemed like a lot of material. Hopefully you... Um, Got a lot out of it. Now, let's a summary here. A slice, also known as a plane section. Ooh, they waited, waited all the way to the end to tell us this. Okay, so now we have a new, we have a, we have a slice, a.k.a. plane section. Okay, so plane section is an a.k.a. for slice. They mean the same thing, okay? It consists of all points where the plane meets the figure, okay? So, again, looking back here, every single point along these lines here that where that plane hits that figure, okay, that is that makes up that um, slice, okay? And not just those along the edge, but everything in between, too, okay? All these points in here, too, all right? Just don't want to mislead you there, okay? So a slice made parallel to a face in a right rectangular prism will be parallel and identical to the face, okay? And those were the first examples we had. A slice made perpendicular to a face in a right rectangular prism will be a rectangular region, okay? With a height equal to the height of the prism, okay? All right, very, very important. It will be a rectangular region, even if it is not parallel, okay? All right, well, uh, I wish you good luck on your, um, on your uh, problem set. And, um, yeah, see you uh, next lesson when we will do some more slicing or plane sectioning.